Hi there everybody, uh, this is Mr. Jetsy here and I'm going to be doing your snake dissection video. This is the one that we didn't really have a nice one on YouTube for, so I figured I'd do a demo and uh, Miss Moyo is gracing me with her uh, filming uh, um, prowess. Prowess, that's a great one, there it is. All right, so um, here's the snake here and uh, this is kind of one of the larger ones. Here is a uh, kind of a smaller one and we have bagged up here. This is definitely going to be a male. This one is big enough to where it might end up being a female, but we're not going to know for sure until we get him or her open and we get the gonads out and they do look differently, the testes versus the ovaries. So first thing before we cut into it, uh, I want to do a couple things on the outside. So first off, if we look at the face of our snake here and look at the eye, the pupil, you can see the pupil is circular. Right? It's not an elliptical pupil that you would see in something like a viper, right? So that means this is no copperhead or cotton mouth or anything like that. This is, however, a water snake. So this is confused with cotton mouths slash water moccasins out there in the nature, but it is not. There's no fangs in here. And speaking of which, if I do open the mouth, ow! It just poked me in my fingers. There are teeth in here. <laughs> As you can see, there's all the teeth. And snakes actually have an extra set of teeth in the roof of the mouth. They have this set all the way around the corner, but they have another stream right here and another one right there. So if a snake bites you, you'd have one, two, three, four strips of teeth marks from the upper bite, or only two from the lower, because there's only two on the bottom side, the, the, the outside and the, or the left and the right, rather, rather than having those on the top. And also, while we got the snake open too, this is where the tongue comes in and out. It's got a little sort of a sheath like the way you, you know, put a sword in or something like that. And here's the tongue. See if I can get it pulled out. I don't know. It might all... No, there it is. Just peeking out. Little tongue right there. See if I can can't get to it. And you'll see it's forked. Ah. That is pretty deep in there. Hmm. This one might not want to come out for us. I guess I can do one thing. I'll do a little quick snip on this little guy. See if I can't get to the tongue that way. Hmm. No, she didn't want to come out, that tongue. It's down, though, in this little orifice. So it's sunken pretty far down in there. I just can't get to it. So, there you go. So that's the snake's face there. This is definitely a constrictor. There are no fangs. There's not a back fang being a colubrid. No normal fangs like a elipid, and no large hinged fangs like a viper. So definitely a constrictor. And constrictors comprise about two-thirds of all snake species. Very common. All right. Uh, next, uh, I'll go ahead and show you this too. The bottom jaw of the fish is actually in two different bones. See how I'm doing that? I can get wider, more narrow, wide, go up and down. Uh, we as mammals only have a single bone in the lower jaw. This one though allows it to widen out, open large to swallow large prey because of course snakes don't take bites out of their food, they swallow it whole. All right, and uh, you can see the scales, normal scales on the snake, but what's different is on the bottom of the snake, they have a special type of scale they call it the scoot. And it's a very long, wide scale. They still overlap, the, the anterior scale does overlap the posterior scale all the way down, right? And just like the regular scales on the upper part of the snake. But these right here, these scoots are exactly what they sound like. The snake scoots along the ground using those scoots, okay? And if we follow it all the way down to the bottom of the snake here, near the very end, you can see those scoots there. As I keep going, I've hit finally the cloaca. And so there it is, there's that little opening if I turn it, that is that common port for reproduction, excretion of urine, and defecation of feces out of the digestive tract. All right. One more little thing to show you guys. If you can see it in the light, it's a little difficult. The scoots are all single pieces. And as soon as you hit the cloaca, the scoots start dividing. There's a little line right there. There's a little line right there. There you go. Now you can see it. There's a scoot, and then there's the other scoot. If this was a venomous snake like a viper or an elipid or something, the scoots past the cloaca still look like the scoots in front. So it'll be a solid scoot and a solid scoot and a solid scoot still rather than these paired ones. However, hopefully you're not getting that close to a snake to look at that. It's just a fun fact. Hopefully just by looking at the face of a snake, you can tell if it's a viper or something like that now. All right. So that's a little bit of the external anatomy. 
And so now we're going to go ahead and get into her a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and say her, because I'm thinking it's a girl, I could be wrong. It is a, it's a big boy if it's, if it's a boy though. All right, so the easiest way to get this thing going is to use the scissors. That way I can kind of angle my scissors upwards so I don't cut deeply down into the organs or anything. And I'm gonna insert at the cloaca. That's the best place to start. And I'm gonna cut, 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 cut until I can get all the way up to the neck. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out the entire string of organs. It's all wrapped in a membrane called the peritoneum. In humans, we have a peritoneum as well. It wraps all of the organs down our abdominal area, your intestines and your liver and, and things like that are all wrapped in peritoneum, okay? So, let's stick that scissor in and we'll start going. Okay? So, definitely gotta be careful. I back up, every time I hit a little snag, is back up slightly and then try again. Yep, okay. and we're probably gonna have some juices start coming out of this thing pretty shortly too. Okay, so trying to stay as shallow as possible. Okay. And scissors are the better utensil here rather than a scalpel because these scales are pretty tough. And of course, scalpels, they cut more deeply as well. So these scissors end up being a much better idea for many types of dissections. You know, kids always wanna get their hands on a scalpel because we've been using scissors since we were little. <laughs> but scalpel blades seem so much more cool, like medical professional type stuff. And they are good for some things, but scissors, man, they really do a good job for others. All right. So I'm gonna go all the way up to the neck, because the lungs are going to be up here. All right, one more little slip. Okay, so put that down and kind of open this up, and you can see that that membrane that I was talking about. All of this white. It's called the peritoneum. And in order to really see the organs, it's really hard to kind of move the peritoneum out of the way and leave those organs in in such a long, thin animal. So we're gonna pull it out in a big old string and then try to separate those organs from one another so we can take a look and see what they look like, okay? And I can already see the heart right here. You can see me kind of moving my finger back and forth on it. It's kind of flopping that way and then flopping that way. That's, that's gonna be the heart. So that's a good spot to try to get your thumb underneath there because the heart's a nice, sturdy organ. And get you all the way under and try to get over to the other side. All right, there it is. Okay, so now I've got all of everything that's important right here, pretty much. So pull it right there and then we'll start to work it down this way. Hmm. I wonder if that sound translates to the video very well. Because it's a nice quick sound. There it is. Mmm. Ah. And this is a girl. I can see eggs right there. This is a girl. Yep. There's an egg right there too. Now these are not fertilized eggs. However, these are ovoviviparous snakes. Meaning that if those eggs were fertilized, they would remain in the animal. You know, because possibly it could be fertilized. I'll take a closer look in a second. If we see little baby snakes growing inside those eggs, then yeah, they are fertilized. All right, and now we're nearing the cloaca and the end of the digestive tract. We kind of stop right there, so that's where I'm stopping. Okay, so I can set the majority of the snake this way and leave the rest of the organs now to kind of come across my dissection tray. And again, you can really see how they're just all wrapped together in this single membrane, the peritoneum. And I can actually kind of start to tear it open right there. So I tear that peritoneum open, you can start to see some color a little bit better than some of the other structures, okay? It is a little bit greasy. And that's some of the fat over there, and that's why it's greasy, some of that stuff's fat. Very similar to when we did the uh, frog 
they're not quite in the little fingers the way fat bodies are in the frog, but it is a little bit different fat than we still have, that, that globular stuff that we carry in our bellies and such. Okay, so coming up here, I'm going to try to get the liver moved away slightly. Okay, come off that way with the liver and the lung. You see the lung? Yeah, yeah, it's right there. I'm going to try to pull that free from the rest of the digestive tracts as well. Okay. Oh, there's and there's a a, and yeah, and there's a trachea that's going to be leading to the lung. Let's see if I can't keep that intact as well. Oh, I can see the little rings. Mm-hmm. Little rings of the trachea, indeed. Okay, so now what I've done is I've taken the heart and the lung. And snakes, by the way, guys, they actually have three lungs but two of them are very, very tiny and don't operate. So they really only have one lung that does any sort of actual job. And it's this one right here. Okay, this is the, uh, I think it's the right lung on snakes, All right? So uh, let's start with some of the easier stuff. So this right here is gonna be uh, like aorta and, and, and vena cava type stuff, blood vessels that are really feeding the heart. And here the heart is covered in a membrane called the pericardium peritoneum is covering all the other gut stuff down here, but the heart itself is pericardium. And you can see that little membrane I'm pulled, pulling away from the heart right there. That's it. How many chambers we got in this yeah, heart? Yeah, three chambers in this guy right here. And I was going to try to open it up to see if we can show you the three chambers. All right, there's the pericardium. Let's slice through. All right, and here comes the heart. Aww. All right, so... We have one atrium is right there. It's kind of flap that I can lift up. That's an atrium. And flipping over, there's the other atrium. So one, two, atria, and then your big ventricle. And if I cut that open, it's probably full of solidified congealed blood. We'll see. And it is. There it is. That's, that's congealed blood right there. There you go. Yummy, yummy. That's what happens when it all clots up. Okay, so that's the blood. So that would be the larger chamber of the ventricle where I'm getting that blood out right there. That's the ventricle chamber. And then the rest of it's all muscle because that's doing all the pumping of the blood, of course, to the body. All right. Now, this is the liver, this large thing right here. And if I cut right through it, you can see that this is not a hollow organ. The liver is solid, solid through and through, very thick glandular organ. And the liver looks like it's connected up to the heart because after um, food nutrition is absorbed by the intestines over here, right? There's the intestines, it goes into bloodstreams and the blood brings it up through the liver for processing before the blood returns back to the heart to be pumped to the lungs to get oxygen and then out to the brain and the rest of the body. All right. So uh, moving on over here, this is the trachea. And the trachea, if you look really closely, it looks great with the light right there. You can see all those little ridges. And you can feel those ridges in the neck of your trachea too. They're made of cartilage and it keeps the, the windpipe open. It's like the little rings that you see on the hose of a vacuum cleaner. Uh, without those rings, when you turn on the vacuum, the hose might well collapse and, the, and nothing sucks through it, but those rings keep it open. And since this is breathing air, the rings help that. And so this is the one lung that actually functions and it looks really cool on the inside, whereas the liver is completely solid. This is hollow. So if I take a little snip through it and lift it this way, you can see that it is hollow, All right? Kind of open it up. Okay? And then if I open it up a little bit more, you can actually see this kind of honeycomb sort of structure to it. Really, really gorgeous there. And those are all the little air sacs called alveoli where the gas exchange occurs between the oxygen that he's breathing in and then the gases in the bloodstream. There are little capillaries that associate with all of those. All right. Now we move over to the third tube leading from the head. Okay. Blood vessels, trachea, and now the esophagus. All right. So snakes have a really nice wide esophagus and it makes sense because they swallow their food whole. It needs to be able to get really wide so you can see how large that is. And if you keep going, it stays pretty large down here. And this is the stomach, all that stomach. Definitely hollow. I've got a little hole in it already. I can kind of open it up. And you can see the stomach has all these little ridges in there. These are called rugae. 
And Ruge allow the stomach to expand. You can imagine if I stretch it, those things kind of stretch out. It's like, like elastic bands in your underwear or something. And along with those little Ruge, there are little tiny cells in there that create you know, hydrochloric acid and stomach acid and other digestive juices. Snake, uh, their digestive juices are much more powerful than ours. Um, if you were to swallow a rat whole, you would not be digesting it the same way a snake does and turning it into basically nothing on the other end. All right. So as we continue down from the stomach, we're going to move into the small intestine. But right before we get there, you can notice this nice green structure. Okay. That is the gallbladder. And if you guys remember your, in your frog, the gallbladder was just below the liver. Well, if I put this all back together, all this back together, there's the liver again. The gallbladder is right beneath it. It just didn't come up with the liver as I pulled it away, though it's highly associated with. So along with the gallbladder, we also have a spleen and a pancreas here. And in order to see those, I'm going to need to get some more of this peritoneum out of the way. Okay, let's get some of that fat. All right, so here is the one, two, three combo of spleen, pancreas, and gallbladder. Gallbladder is green, always is. This one's actually really green, nice and olive, and it's green colored because of a chemical called bile. Bile is made by the liver, right? And bile helps the snake absorb fats from the food that it eats. And it happens in us too. Our gallbladder is also green. And there's the spleen right beside it. Kind of reddish brown, circular. You can kind of see it just sticking up off of the rest of that material. Definitely changes color there. So there's the spleen. And then the spleen is coming off of this little bit right here. Hold on, let me get underneath it. All right. So here, this is nice. Now I can kind of continue with the digestive tract. So you can see this kind of dead end piece that's sticking off. I guess let me use this pointer a little better. All right, so here's intestine. This is pancreas, okay? Right off of the intestine and the spleen then sticks off the pancreas. And again, gallbladder around the other side, okay? So once you get past that triplet, the, the spleen, pancreas, and gallbladder, now it's really gonna be intestine proper, all right? So if I start to open it up, you can see that's coiled up intestines right there. Okay. Now, pretty quickly though, I'm, I'm starting to run into ovaries. So snakes, um, their testes and ovaries are very long, um, especially the ovaries, because they can hold you know, up to a couple dozen babies. And these eggs right here, um, I'm, let's see if I can pull one or two out. There we go. Just kind of pull, there's some fat along with them. So all these are just egg along the ovary, and here we go. All righty, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, just in my hand, and there are more. There's a 10th one right there. And looking at these guys, they I don't see little baby snakes growing in them, all right? I see these little things, but these are not, these are not embryos. So nothing really in there, okay? I will show you, however, uh, I've got a jar right here. This jar right here are some more well-developed snakes that we pulled out of a pregnant female before, and there they are. You can see that is the yolk left over from one of these normal eggs right there. And then on the other side, you can see that a whole baby snake is all curled up in there and it's all still surrounded by the same membrane as that, okay? It's the amniotic sac. And here's a snake that actually pulled out of the membrane. And there's a little baby. These are probably a day or two away from birth. They were very, very well developed. But that was in a previous dissection. I just thought they were so cool that I wanted to save them. All right. So we've got those eggs. And those eggs are coming off this material. This would be the ovary. That's the ovary there. And easily, you know, seeing those eggs has got to be a female. All right. So as I keep going down, here's the other set of eggs and ovary, okay? So I can pull those out. And they're a little offset uh, with the ovaries and testes in the snake. One is a little more in front of the other, and that's because being that the snake is relatively thin, it's hard to really stack them side by side. So this would be the other ovary with more eggs there and there and there, okay? So lastly, as we continue past this ovary, and we've got the other set of ovary all removed, Okay, 
So one over here, you back up a little bit. Yeah, one over here, one over there, right? Now we get to the final little bit and there's two more organs and it's another paired organ and they are also slightly offset the way the ovaries are. And again, just for saving space. And they are the kidneys. And there they are, okay? So you can see if I hold them like this, one kidney is higher up in front than this one. This is gonna be the posterior kidney and that would be the anterior kidney up in front of it. So I turn around this way, you'd see the way it laid, all right? So the two kidneys there and the rest of this in the middle is still intestine, all right? So here's the intestinal tract. So the snake, after it eats stuff, goes through, it's processed, everything's digested, and it moves on through, and it would poop out the cloaca. The kidneys would be letting urine out through the cloaca, and these eggs would be birthed out through the cloaca as well. So do the, does their small intestine have the divisions like the frog and like mm, ours does? No, no, they do not. There is no large slash small. It's just intestinal tract all the way. All the right. Snake. No large and small. Good question, Miss Moyo. All right, guys. So that is your snake dissection. Um, hopefully you learned something and thought it was kind of cool. You I made did. a mess. I did make a mess. It's all right. It's what I do. All right, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye.